give a quick recap on a couple of elements of yesterday. We're not going to go deep into it, but uh, just to get everyone a little bit on the same playing field. Um, yesterday, we were talking about um, how, you know how like when you're on a guided meditation and the frequency of the meditation gets higher and higher and higher and somewhere in there you just kind of space out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, and then like as the person leading the meditation brings it back at a certain point, you find yourself like back with the group and you're like, how long was I out of it? Where did they go? What did I miss? Mm -hmm. Yesterday we were working on, um, and I will this week upload the meditation videos to YouTube so uh, anyone who wants can practice with them. And I'm going to make a lot more like five to 15 minute videos on specific technical exercises. So we were working on how to build a strong enough internal structure that you can take your frequency higher and higher and higher and still be cognizant and interactive, right? I mean, think about it. The planet's frequency is going up. If we are not, you know, like working with our energy, there's going to be like some awesome ascension and we're going to watch all our friends float away and we're like, oh crap, I'm stuck here in 3D world. <laughs> so the whole point of yesterday was understanding there's meditation for spirit journey, there's meditation for, you know, higher education, but there's also meditation for uh, technical skill development. Um, and this is not the only way. I mean, certainly there's uh, chanting meditations. There's like every group that has meditation has different styles of technical skill. So what we're working on is not like a new uh, modality. Whatever modality you work in, these technical skills will be applicable and we'll work with whatever technical skills are specific for your modality, be it angelic, Buddhist, shamanic, whatever. You know, the more you work the inner grid, like I was saying yesterday, it's like practicing your scales so you can play Chopin on the piano. Um, the first step, and in a moment we'll do a quick meditation for this, is to ground. Um, you need to have a solid root chakra firmly connected to earth if you want to take your crown chakra up and be connected because you need to support the energy going up and as all that beautiful energy is coming into you and it goes through you into earth that's what they call the hollow bones the divine conduit you know that's uh the we were saying the live wire the copper wire that everything goes through not only are you then able to like uh, take your crown chakra higher and be more with it, but the energy is going through you into earth as opposed to going through you and then dissipating or going through you and making you queasy and have vertigo or going to you and you pass out and then the energy is just like carrying you around like a sleeping baby. So, um, and like we all know people who are like beautiful divine people but they're not grounded and they're usually not effective you know like the heal the and I'm not going to mention any names because we all know these people and they're usually wonderful high frequency <coughs> people who just enjoy floating in a high frequency and that may be part of their path for this life that might be something they're working on this life or they may be on a multi-life path to develop certain things. So there's no point yanking anyone out of what they're in, but they are not effective for planetary healing. Often these people, they'll start a business and it doesn't really go anywhere because they're like, oh, business plan, what's that? Marketing, what's that? No, I just sit here and manifest and nothing's happening, but I'm so high frequency. You know, we, we, we've seen this. So, but when you ground, then you have the entire earth and all of nature energy supporting all of your work. Then you can work technically with all of your chakras in your body. And yesterday we were working not just with the seven main chakras, we were working with 
more of the 2,000 chakras all through the body. And you can make like a, an electrical grid, a matrix, internal mandalas that connect with each other. So you become a me mechanism, like the inside of a clock tower or something, that then can support your crown chakra to go higher, to go wider, to go whatever. And as the energy comes in, it's not just flowing through you. You have the ability to do that but you can also then connect it to specific elements and then send energy out with very specific technical purpose. And we were sending specific lines of energy out from specific chakras within ourselves. So uh, if you weren't here yesterday, watch the videos when I load to YouTube because uh, it's some cool techniques. If you were here yesterday, you want to do it because you need to practice, practice, practice. Me too. This is like lifelong practice. If possible, turn your cell phone off. If you're like a mom and you can't turn it off, turn it to airplane mode um, because we're gonna be working with frequency. And you know what happens? We're in a frequency and we're like, and someone's phone goes and we're all like, ah, and all of our crown <laughs> shot is like, oh, it gets jangled. Thank you, Kim. I'm actually gonna turn mine off too. Um, it's best if it's off, off, because the energy here is going to get really high. And we've seen other times where someone's like, but I have it in do not disturb. I have it in airplane mode. I don't know why it's making that noise, because things happen. Or it can completely drain the airplane off. You know, what? mine was off, off Friday night. We went to Shaman Manin's uh, Shaman Shack. And Max the Crystal Skull was there, and they were doing, um, and uh, what's her name? Um, uh, who were doing the, the cacao ceremony. Yeah, we're doing a cacao ceremony. So, and it was like powerhouse people there. The energy was so high, I shut my phone off, and it was like 78% power. And at the end of the ceremony, I turned it back on, and it was drained, like 100% drained. So, you know, when we think, oh, well, you know, is it in my imagination or is there really things happening? Like, my poor phone can say yes. <laughs> okay. Um, another thing I want to talk about before we get going, and I just want to mention this quickly, but it's not part of the agenda. We were talking yesterday about using ego as a tool for personal healing. And... Um, you know, honestly, yesterday, the things that I thought would take more time, everyone got like that. And the things that I thought we'd pick up quickly, everyone like, wait, what? Wait, what? So <laughs> it threw me off a little bit. <laughs> so, and um, so I just want to address yesterday the concept of ego is um, our society has taken this beautiful word and kind of perverted it, bastardized it a bit. Uh, we confuse ego with arrogance or jack, jackassiveness or jerkiness or like it's become a very negative word. But ego is not, it, it's like just get that. Ego has nothing to do with any of that. Arrogance is arrogance. Jerkiness is jerkiness. Ego is a tool that exists within us. It's an assistant. Every single living being has an ego. So how can it be bad? How can we I like, oh, I spent my whole life trying to diminish my ego. Like, but everyone, animals, angels, aliens, light beings, ascended masters, God and Gaia has an ego. So trust me, it cannot be bad. Um, one of the main reasons I think very divine and uh, empathic and empathetic caring people think of ego as bad is because we're so used to being humble. And like, so my ego will say to me, Bonita, you're awesome. You can do this. And I'll go, oh, no, 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 no. I'm being too egotistical. Who am I to think I can do this? And your ego is like, no, I'm telling you, you can do it. Oh, 
oh, no, 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 no. You know, I need to be humble. We don't need to be humble. We need to be in alignment with truth. When you exist in the resonance of truth, there's no arrogance. There's no humility. There is what is. Ego helps you become in the resonance of truth. All right? Now, the first thing with manifesting what you wish and being in the resonance of truth, if I say to my ego, this is what I want, ego will let me know everything I need to release to achieve what I want, to get on that path. So usually the first thing ego points out to me is all the stuff I'm trying to ignore in myself. Um, all the, the, um, the weights in my emotional backpack, you know, the guilt, the, oh my God, like I can tell you when I was nine years old, I once did a bad thing. I was mean to a friend of mine. We made up, but to this day, I carry the guilt of that. My friend doesn't even remember it and has told me numerous times, why do you still feel guilty about this? And that's a good question. Why would I feel guilty at age 56 of one mean thing I said to a friend at age nine that we made up over and our relationship now, you know, uh, what, 47 years later is still really good. So ego helps me find this. And the reason is because I don't want to ever say mean things to people. So I carry it as a reminder. But ego's like, we think you learned that lesson. You can release this guilt and anxiety. It's a weight and it doesn't serve you. So ego helps you find all the things you need to release so that you can get in alignment with the path of your manifestation, with the resonance of truth, with what it is that you wish to connect with. And then ego helps you get there. So think of ego as your trusted assistant who wants you to be your most joyous, happy, loving, divine self. Ego wants what you want. Um, and the more you want goodness, the more ego will give it to you. So just remember that as we go forward, okay? And I'll tell you, the more you work with ego, the more you're like, wow. Now I get like those people where everything they want just happens for them. They're in alignment with their ego. They work with their ego. And you're like, well, I want to be more like that person. I want everything I want to happen for me. Be in the resonance of truth with the ego, manifest what you wish, and it, everything falls. It just helps everything magnetically get attracted to your path that you keep walking forward into divine blessings. Uh, one word of warning, you may find that some of your friendships will shift, that people you're friends with because you're all in rough together as things start going forward to you, your friends will get mad at you because they want you back here with them. And you're like, no, go forward with me. Love your ego. And they're like, ah, you're so egotistical. And going, yes, yes, you got it. <laughs> so, um, so that in a nutshell is most of what we talked about yesterday. Today, we are going to sh connect with different global energies. And honestly, I was a little ambitious because I have enough material for a week-long <laughs> class. <laughs> so we're going to have to pick and choose a little bit. If there are thing requests that you all have on things you want to connect with or how, but I want everyone to be able to leave today feeling comfortable connecting with a collective, connecting with a mandala, connecting with, you know, the elephants, like I'm not sure who here saw one uh, the YouTube video where I channeled the elephant collective and they brought us in as one with them. It's like one of my, oh, find it on my YouTube channels. It's just so beautiful because I thought that they're going to bring us in to be a physical elephant. Oh, you know, your eyes are like this, your trunk is like this so that we can feel it. And instead they brought us into the spirit of the elephant and how the spirit of the elephant and the higher elephant collective connects with the earthly living elephant and how they're all telepathically and empathically connected and how they're like sacred healers of the world. It was like, it was crazy. Wow. Yeah, and none of that came from my head. Yes, Will? What are mandalas? So 
That is a great question. A mandala is a network. It's a grid. So um, in our bodies, we talk about our chakras. In reality, each chakra is its own mandala. A mandala is when multiple elements are connected. So it's a grid, a network. We, we've seen like um, beautiful circular artistic mandalas or like, you know, uh, when the Buddhists and the Hindus make these beautiful sand mandalas and then afterwards they brush them up and return them. And that's like a gorgeous mandala artwork and they're very powerful. However, um, a mandala on earth is usually not going to be all ornate like that. Um, I'm going to use the elephant collective again for as an example for a mandala. So every elephant alive is connected to each other in their mandala. They're also connected to their land. So you have like a lot of elephants here in Africa, but you have an elephant in a zoo in, you know, Washington, D.C. So you have like a huge grid here that creates a mandala like a chakra because it's so intense the mandala becomes just like one ball of energy but then it goes all the way over here to dc to this one or three elephants and to so every single elephant is connected it, they're also connected to their spirit guides and to the dimension that they originally came from because they come from a slightly different original dimension from the human collective and you know it goes on to their guides and to source eventually and to earth and then there's all the animals that they protect and they caretake. There's their ancestors that they're connected to. So these are, you may even see them as different colors of energetic lines. Like elephants, when they go on their path, elephants are a matriarchal society. So the lead elephant is going to be usually the eldest female of, of their group. And as they go wandering, because they need to eat a lot of food, so they're very nomadic, they will occasionally go out of their regular path to, um, like, uh, there's, I saw a documentary where the elephants went to, way out of their path, to where there was an elephant skeleton. And all the elephants went to the skeleton, and they gathered around it, and with their trunks they were rubbing over the, the skull of the elephant, and the older elephants were bringing the baby elephants in to connect to it. You could see a huge amount of psychic communication going between these elephants. This was an elderly elephant who had been a tribal elder who had died of old age. And whenever they were near this, they all came to give homage to this, to this elephant and to pass down the energies, the stories. You know, it, it's beyond our ability to really understand unless we go into the elephant collective and become one with them then they can share it with us so we are going to do um something in that line today um i'm not sure which collective but we're we're going to be doing that so the elephant mandala goes all around the world to other dimensions to other frequencies not just to elephants, but to locations, to animals that they look out for, except where elephants are enslaved. If an elephant's born in slavery and they're mistreated, you know, abused by humans, they can be disconnected from the elephant mandala. It's a very painful, lonely experience for them. The elephants, like when I meditate with them, they always ask that I meditate with full joy and love, not with like, I am so sorry with what we're doing to you. That doesn't do them any good. They want the positive love, the positive feeling, which allows them to do a few things. One, it helps them put protection around them so that hunters looking for them may not find them or so that their protectors may come and stop hunters. It also uh, helps them power up their mandala, their grid, their network to try to reach out to the separated enslaved elephants and you know, try to connect with them. So um, this is where a mandala, it's not a beautiful image like 
again, like the sand mandalas, but it is a powerful connection of energy. And the more energy it has, the more it can reach out and connect. There was once a time when all life on our planet was able to connect with everyone and everything through all the mandalas, and all the mandalas were, were fully functioning and powerful. Humanity has been destroying multiple mandalas everywhere. And now we are helping to uh, heal and regrow the mandala. So when we do the mandala meditation, I'm not going to dictate what mandala you go to. You will find whichever one your soul will naturally uh, resonate with for this. So we'll all have interesting experiences. Um, now, chakras, again, like say uh, we're going to take solar plexus chakra. That is a meridian in the body where a lot of energetic lines cross. Uh, physical energetic lines and spiritual energetic lines, you know, many things. So it has so many crossing that it, cre it looks like a ball of light. But it's actually really a mandala within itself. And when you connect all the mandalas, the seven prime mandalas and the 2,000 further mandalas, we are, or chakras, I mean, we are within our body a mandala. So if you then connect, like in this room right now, we're all becoming very connected, we're creating a mandala right here. But there's so much energy, someone from high up look, might look down and say, oh, look at that chakra because we become like a little ball of light. And as, because we're, we're so intense, we're so bright, and we're so close together. Uh, so chakras are really intense mandalas. And, you know, but mandalas are connection, grid networks, energy flowing from one source to another. And that's why, again, when I say someone absorbs angelic energy and they just float around, they're having a good time. It's like swinging on a hammock on a Sunday afternoon. But that energy is not connecting in a meaningful way to help strengthen the global mandalas. Does that make sense? Say that last part again about the energy. The well, energy when we ground mm -hmm. and the energy is going through us and we work our inner network of energy, then we have the ability to connect in a powerful, meaningful way and strengthen back up global mandalas. Yeah, as well as have a more fun life for ourselves. It really helps with manifestation. So today, um, we're going to explore some global techniques for connecting with self, uh, including we're going to do a past life regression. Um, we're going to do a cord. Yesterday we were talking about cord cutting, which I call cord cleansing because all it does is release non-love. We'll do a cord cleansing ceremony. Um, in the twilight realm, which is a uh, land between time and space. Some people call it the bardo. It's just a place where you can go to where you're not being hit by any energies around. It's pure neutral. Um, and we're going to connect with the spirit guides of our current and past lives. It's really important that as we go forward with life, we remember, like, we are each who we are in this life, but we are one facet of an eternal being who chooses to change shape from one life experience to another. The reason this is important is because it's important that we honor ourselves. If we only value ourselves on what we have done in this life experience, that, I mean, like, it's so easy to judge. Like yesterday, um, I, I was talking with Will after class, and I said, I'm frustrated because I didn't handle the concept of ego as well as I wanted, because I didn't prepare for a class to go the way it did. <coughs> I thought it would go in a different way, and I, I kind of left people a little frustrated. And Will very kindly talked with me a little bit about, you know, re-repairing so I was able to do this today. If I judged my entire sense of self on that moment, 
I would have a very poor, frustrated sense of self. I would be thinking very poorly of myself. Luckily, I have my entire life to judge myself on, and I have a lot more articulate moments than I have, you know, inarticulate. So I can think of myself as an articulate person. But then if I think of myself with all of my past lives, then whatever I do in this life, I, can, I don't need to judge myself so harshly because I'm, well, yeah, but I'm not as bad as that time when I knifed <laughs> someone in a back alley for, you know, a tuppence. And uh, I'm a heck of a lot better than when I was like that barbarian pirate who just murdered people for fun. So I think this life I'm doing okay. <laughs> and I'm like, well, then I connect with my higher self and my higher self is an eternal being of divine love. So I'm like, I'm definitely doing okay. I'm an eternal being of divine love. I can actually feel really good about myself. That is how I choose to value myself most of the time. So um, that's why today as we are going to connect with some of our states of being outside of just this 3D life, it's a good reminder that we have energies that we can draw from at any time. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, um, lovely. Um, okay, 